Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I'm Dr. Asif Ali Sayed from the Department of Business Administration, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh. Today, we shall be discussing about the module Business Management Skills of the paper Skill Development and Social Entrepreneurship. After completing this module, the students will be able to understand the concept and relevance of business management skills, get familiar with the dimensions of types of business skills, requisite management skills, and leadership skills prerequisite for an organization. Introduction to Business Management Skills The ability to find a parsimonious solution to problems, make good judgments and decisions related to the intelligent functioning of humans. These are particularly significant functions of a managerial work. However, Standard intelligent tests and aptitude tests of one sort or other predominantly measures the ability to code information, to store it and retrieve it when necessary, whereas these abilities are necessary for academic and scholastic success. What counts outside the scholastic environment of the classrooms is the former, thus is a sense called planning. The evidence in favor of predicting managerial success from intelligent tests is mixed. Therefore, it is difficult to support the predictability of intelligence tests for occupational success. McClellan recommends that generalized competencies should be delineated by focusing directly on the thought patterns which are required for the manager's role. The top executive functions as well as we all know include planning, goal setting, problem solving, decision making under poorly structured and uncertain situations. We are equally aware that managers differ in all the quality of decisions they make. There are two main reasons why individuals differ in this regard, cognitive components and motivational predisposition. In the study reported, where we have a proposed a test of cognitive competence, thus this is purported to be a test for assessment of managerial ability in which individuals are required to take a management decision for maximizing profit under certain realistic constraints. Business Excellence in Indian Scenario Business operates amidst multiple forces and is under an unprecedented pressure to perform. The key to performance lies in anticipating the future and working towards it. This means asking the question, how much of its resources is the company putting in renewal and innovation, that is in activities like research and development, quality and process improvement, industrial design, marketing research and so on. What is the record of Indian companies when it comes to innovation? While impressive strides have been made by certain companies, the same cannot be said of the entire Indian industry. It is mostly the MNCs driven by their worldwide processes that have been at the forefront of innovation. There have been some Indian companies too doing a good job but the majority seems to be ill prepared to meet the global onslaught or even the Chinese one. In this context, the following issues are examined. What is the concept of innovation? How do Indian companies achieve a grasp of it? Is innovation an ongoing process? And should companies strive for breakthrough developments or focus on continuous improvement? It is not the strongest who survive, nor the most intelligent, but those most responsive to change, as quoted by Charles Darwin. If this is true, are the Indian companies doing enough to respond to the changing times? Again, we examine the Indian scenario in the manufacturing and services sector. While many companies are adapting fast, there are many that are still to wake to the changing times. The key traits required in an organization to achieve excellence are as follows. Having key customer insights, focusing business strategies on customer value, quality commitment, upgrading knowledge and processes, management by facts and feedback.
business today is being impacted by multiple forces, economic shocks, atomization of markets and demand, borderless commerce, advances in technology, a sense of acceleration and deconstruction of business. Moreover, from the monolithic markets of the pre-90s, the scenario has now shifted to that of micro segmentation, multiple competition and short product cycles. Clearly, business is under an unprecedented pressure to perform. The key to performance lies in anticipating the future and working towards it. This means asking the question, how much of its resources is the company putting in renewal and innovation in activities like research and development, quality process improvement, industrial design, marketing research and so on. The time to repair the roof is when the sun is shining. So, such activities are best carried out when the business is going fine rather than as a knee-jerk reaction to the market forces. Innovation. What is the record of Indian companies when it comes to innovation? We have seen design improvements in the B car segment with Santro taking a clear lead on the basis of its superior industrial design. Similarly, there have been plenty of feature improvements in almost all brands of refrigerators like LG, Godrej, Kelvinator, etc. The fast moving consumer good FMCG sector has not lagged behind either. Most food consumables like cooking oil, milk, additives, etc. have long been available in refill packs. There have been packaging innovations like the jar for parachute, coconut oil for winters, improved keep fresh packaging in some tea brands, new pack of bislery and the virtual small pack revolution in the entire FMCG sector with which branded shampoos, soft drinks and other products including Vaseline joining the bandwagon. Responsiveness to change. It is not the strongest to survive nor the most intelligent but those most responsive to change. Quoted by Charles Darwin. If that is true, are the Indian companies doing enough to respond to the changing times? The marketplace does not provide adequate evidence to that effect. Chinese goods with their good quality and competitive prices are capturing the market but the Indian industry is yet to catch on. Responsiveness to change is evident in the telecom and banking sector while the anytime money concept of ATMs, automated teller machines has mushroomed in a big way. The new emphasis is on sharing of ATMs by the banks to manage the cost and speed aspects of the service. In the telecom sector, value added services have been introduced in a fast paced till a few years ago, the SMS penetration was less than 2%. The oil companies are also responding to the deregulation. The petrol pumps have undergone a complete facelift in the last three years and are still continuing with their transformation effort to cope with the demands of the market forces. Total Quality Management TQM has made impressive inroads in the manufacturing and service sector. Organizations have finally realized the difference between seeking an ISO certification and launching a process to improve continuously. The shape of TQM in different organizations may be different, but there are obvious similarities in terms of three basic factors. The first one is a demonstration of management's commitment. Second is involvement of employees across the organization. And third, building of support systems to help continuous improvement. The manufacturing sector is focusing on aspects like lean management, TQM, quality circles and Kaizen. Their essential approach has been influenced significantly by the Japanese approach to TQM. The service sector has been using the Six Sigma banner to further its movement. Some of the management processes that were followed at Hewlett Packard India were followed to achieve excellence and it finally resulted them in winning the CII Exim Award for Business Excellence and these were as follows. Personal involvement of the CEO in building an organizational culture conducive to business excellence. Total visible and emphatic commitment from senior management to TQM. Strong employee motivation. Unique and successful application of tools such as policy management, measurement of customer satisfaction, and people satisfaction, 
and integration of total quality principle in the business philosophy of the company. Organizational values. When it comes to values, a shortcut is often tempting both for individuals and organizations. It proves detrimental though in the long run. Correct accounting practices, fair and timely payment to vendors, adherence to local laws and following environmental friendly practices, these are all time consuming acts and are often considered a nuisance by those in a hurry. The Indian companies need to cultivate and practice of values if they aspire to attain the global heights. Mintra for business excellence. As we move into the 21st century, the mantra for an eternally successful organization in our opinion needs to have the following components. Special insights into the needs of the customers. At times, a customer problem stays in the face of the company and so is the solution. However, the company continues to remain is a prisoner of its own ways. For instance, on the Delhi Agra Highway, there is a mile long queue at the toll payment gates on peak days. Business strategies focus on consumer values. Many large companies remain stuck in their operating models and real change comes only with the new generation entrepreneurs. Quality commitment at all levels. Quality is mainly a matter of practice and requires implementation of proper principles. The Japan plant of Hewlett Packard was once able to achieve extremely high part accuracy quality levels while maintaining production numbers. When asked about their secret, the response was quality is obtained by doing our work carefully, not quickly. Constantly updating products and processes. Customers feedbacks can be a powerful input to spot areas where the company needs to work. For instance, we have all bought a tape recorder while how many of us have used it is recording head. We sure should see that if the manufacturers can drop the recording head from the product, the customers can save about 5% of the cost. Management by facts and feedback. Most large companies, including Hewlett Packard, conduct periodic satisfaction surveys among customers, channels and employees. These serve as a useful feedback mechanism for course correction. Indian companies of all sizes would do well to emulate this practice. Developing leadership skills, innovation in design. Saying that doing business in a highly dynamic and volatile work environment poses unprecedented challenges to organization and their leaders is stating the obvious. In order to effectively deal with various challenges and succeed, organization need leaders who could help them realize their objectives. Furthermore, it is required that people from each level in the organization are involved in leading. Management researchers and practitioners argue that it is vital for any organization to develop leadership skills among its members if it aspires to succeed and take an edge over others. Scholars working in the area of leadership development maintain that leadership skill can be developed among organizational members and MBA students through carefully designed programs and interventions. The challenge often is that leadership training is extremely resource intensive. Leadership development arguably needs an understanding of self, others and the system. It is assumed that it can be best done in small groups with attention to the individual and it takes prolonged engagement. Thus, designing learning inputs for large groups is a challenge that is real and remains unaddressed by many practitioners and faculty in management schools. I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, I do and I understand is a very important Chinese proverb. Today organizations across the world are doing business in a highly competitive work environment with new challenges to be met on a daily basis. In order to survive and succeed they need leaders who could help them realize their objectives. Organizations cannot be led by, to success only by one or two leaders who occupy pivotal roles. 
but people from each level in the organization have to be involved in the leadership process as said by Day and Halpin 2004. Reddy and Conger 2007 argue that leadership development has become a crucial strategic process and a lack of attention to it carries a huge cost for the organization. The success of an organization often depends upon the ability of the organization to nurture and develop leadership capacity among its employees as stated by Riggio 2008, Ruvolo, Peterson and Lebulf 2004, Virakul and McLean in 2012. Various leadership development programs, interventions have been found to be significantly impacting the organizational performance as stated by Avvoilo, Richard, Hana, Walumba and Chan in 2009 and Avvoilo et al. 2005 and developed various skills such as communication, decision making, teamwork, initiative, planning among participants as stated by Hoover, Gamfasti. Sorensen et al. Leadership development can happen in various contexts and locations such as on the job, through specifically designed programs to prepare the individual for undertaking a particular role and as a part of degree in business management. Business schools where prospective leaders in business get education also have an equal responsibility to develop leadership skills among future leaders. The more commonly used methods include simulation-based training, classroom lecture, indoor training and outdoor experiential training programs. Each of these methods is unique and has certain advantages, disadvantages over others in one or more aspects. Defining leadership. Leaders are also described as exhibiting a certain style in managing people who are completing a task as was stated by Blake and Moulton 1964. From this traditional perspective, a leader is viewed as an individual in charge of a team providing direction and support to the team members, often described as followers. Aligning the team's goals with the broader purpose of the organization, as was stated by Day and Harris in 2007, and providing vision to the team organization in the traditional approach it is assumed that leadership rests in a certain position or role. Leaders need to have superior knowledge or expertise. They have to be extraordinarily skilled and they have to have a vision as well as the ability to influence people in their favor. What do leaders do? To be able to help exert influence with or without authority, we believe that leaders have to become skilled on various fronts. To take risks, it has been observed that effective leaders challenge themselves, experiment, take sensible risks and learn from their mistakes. The second thing they do is observe patterns. Effective leaders are able to step out of the day-to-day -day activities and observe patterns. They are able to distinguish solitary events from patterns that get repeated. Third, align interest. Most leadership challenges involve multiple parties having diverse interests. Effective leaders align interests of all the concerned parties they seek to balance and interests of those stakeholders including their own and those of their team members and of their organization for which they are responsible. The fourth is they foster trust. It has been argued that leaders must be trustworthy themselves and must trust their people too. Effective leaders create an environment of trust and fairness within the organization and help in increasing the mutual trust among employees. Making of the T-shaped MBA Cogito ergo sum, I think therefore I am. Rene Descartes, Stumpf 1982 said this. Descartes thought that humans differ from animals in their ability to think and create new products by the use of their mental faculties. Animals were more of automatons driven by training and program. Without going into the merits of otherwise of his philosophical position on the differences, the important point is that humans can change their endeavors through their entrepreneurship, willpower, determination and vision about the future 
and aspirations. Managers are supposed to provide all these inputs leading to betterment of the organization they work which in turn should lead to happiness and prosperity all around. These attributes are difficult to teach through lecturing. Giving gyan as the street smart student would term it, one has to dirty his or her hands and then see how it comes out. It is not unlike swimming or cycling. The student has to enter the pool or ride the bicycle to learn balancing acts and move forwards. The emerging key attributes of the modern global manager are as follows as quoted by Jane 1994. The task of the strategic manager is to strike a fit between the various soft and hard competencies of excellence appropriate to the organizational values and needs of the time. At this stage, he has to become a specialist entrepreneurial visionary general manager. This role extends much beyond the requirements of a general manager envisaged by Harvard professor Kenneth Andrews in 1968, Andrews 1987. It calls for humane perspective, holistic vision, artistic management skills, strong techno-commercial knowledge base and a positive orientation towards learning. The two-year course is intended to make the MBA graduate a T-shaped knowledge worker. A specialist in some fields, that is the vertical part of the T and a generalist in all area, the horizontal part of T. Let us summarize what we have learned so far. In the Indian scenario, it is mainly the MNCs driven by their global processes that are driving business excellence. The same culture needs to be cultivated by Indian companies, be they large or medium ones. They need to focus on innovation and responsiveness to change, quality and process improvement, adoption of sound values and management by facts and feedback. In the global scenario, this may well turn out to be the difference between survival and demise. The most crucial element of management education is developing the student's ability to critically evaluate information and think. The student must acquire skills that enable him to form a view of the future, call it an element of foresight, and then be able to act upon it to profit from the coming opportunity. The ability to find a parsimonious solution to problems, make good judgments and decisions related to the intelligent functioning of human, these are particularly significant functions of the managerial work for business management. Thank you.